Before Rome, Babylon, and the pyramids, there was already a civilization called Kandak, the first self-governing people on Earth. Kandak was free and thriving until the tyrannical King Akhtun occupied it by force. But King Akhtun didn't just want to rule over Kandak, he wanted to use the people of Kandak to mine for a rare mineral with magic properties called Eternium, which was found only in Kandak. Using Eternium, King Akhtun would forge the crown of Sabak to attain great power and invincibility. He enslaved the people of Kandak and forced them to dig their own lands to gather Eternium. One day, one slave finally found an Eternium and this caused the other slaves to become frantic, trying to steal the Eternium from him. Years of slavery had caused them desperation, believing that they would receive a reward once they found an Eternium. But the reward was just a lie because the slave was killed after giving the Eternium to a guard. A young boy witnessed the death of his fellow slave and attempted to stage a revolt, but was captured by the king and beheaded as a punishment. Before King Octun could kill him, the young boy suddenly vanished into smoke. The Council of Wizards had chosen him to bring balance to the world. The young boy was transformed into an adult superhero and using his newly attained power, he killed King Octun and set the people of Kondak free before disappearing forever. 5,000 years later, Kondak is once again oppressed by the international mercenaries called the Intergang. Adriana Tomas, a wanted archaeologist, escaped the city with the help of her brother Karim and colleagues Samir and Ishmael to locate the crown of Sabak. They reached a tomb and Adriana went inside with Samir and Ishmael while Karim stayed in the car. Inside the tomb, they found inscriptions written on the walls. Unbeknownst to Adriana, Samir had been killed and Karim was captured by the Intergang soldiers. Once Adriana obtained the crown, the Intergang rushed in, holding Karim and grabbed Ishmael. They threatened to kill Karim if Adriana didn't give them the crown and as a last resort, Adriana feigned surrender and read an incantation that awakened Taith Adam, the ancient champion. Everyone in the tomb was blown away by a sudden surge of power and the champion appeared, easily taking the Intergang soldiers down. More Intergang soldiers appeared, trying to bring Adam down and Adriana used this as a chance to escape with Karim after taking the crown. Adam had defeated the Intergang soldiers but was knocked down when he caught a rocket made of Eternium, which then blew up in his hand. On the other hand, U.S. government official Amanda Waller heard about the awakening of the champion, deemed him a threat to innocent people, and contacted the Justice Society to apprehend Adam. There are four members of the Justice Society. The first member is Hawkman, who has the power to defy gravity and fly. The second member is Maxine Hunkel, also known as the Cyclone. She can manipulate wind and has an IQ of 167. The third member is Al Rothstein, also known as the Atom Smasher, whose power is super strength, mass increase, and manipulation. Then comes the last member, Kent, also known as Dr. Fate, who has the power to wield magic, conjure illusions, and get a glimpse of the future. The team of four powerful individuals then set out in pursuit of the champion and found him flying with two intergang soldiers in both his hands. Adam dropped the soldiers and Hawkman flew to save them and a fight broke out between the champion and Justice Society. Fighting with both Hawkman and Dr. Fate at the same time, Adam struggled a bit against their powers. And things just got more interesting when Cyclone and Atom Smasher joined in. Seeing that the champion was being overpowered, Amon ran to help him but failed as he was almost hit by Adam's power. Dr. Fate was able to save Amon and took both the boy and Adriana to safety. And when he touched Adriana's bag, Dr. Fate was overcome with a vision and knew then that Adriana had the crown of Sabak. The fight went on until Adam Smasher grew in size and smacked him into the ground. They thought it was over and they had defeated the champion, but Adam overpowered Adam Smasher and knocked him out with just one punch. Then the fight was over. Adam flew away as the people of Kondak cheered for the champion. Once Adam was gone, the Justice Society approached Adriana asking to see the crown. But the crown wasn't with Adriana. She gave it to Amon to bring it back home and keep it safe. Adriana didn't want anything to do with the Justice Society as she believed that Adam was the only hero Kondak needed, not the Justice Society, which never once helped them when Kondak suffered under military occupation. Hawkman then explained that Adam is not the hero Adriana thinks he is, as an ancient text they'd read told them about how Adam's rage nearly destroyed Kondak. The reason they flew to Kondak was to stop it from happening again. Hearing this, Adriana decided to bring the Justice Society to Adam so they could talk peacefully, but Adam refused to listen. The truth was then revealed, Adam never came to save Kondak when he was granted his power, he came to take revenge on King Octun, and in his anger, his power grew so uncontrollable that it nearly destroyed Kondak. The tomb Adam was sleeping in wasn't really a tomb, it was his prison after the Council of Wizards deemed him unworthy and put him in a deep slumber. That was until Adriana decided to wake him up in hopes of getting a hero that would set them free. 
She stated that even if Adam wasn't a hero, it doesn't mean that he can't become one now. Hearing this, Adam finally decided to listen. But then Adriana received a call from Amon who was in danger. While Adriana went with the Justice Society to talk with Adam, Amon went back home and found Ishmael, whom they believed died during the fight in the tomb. Ishmael revealed himself to be the leader of the Intergang Conduct Division, and he was after the crown. Kareem tackled Ishmael to give Amon enough time to escape and was shot. Amon hid and called Adriana who then begged Adam to save her son. Followed by three members of the Justice Society, Adam chased after the soldiers that had captured Amon. Meanwhile, Dr. Fate went to the wounded Kareem. Adam chased down one of the bikes and grabbed it. Once on the ground, he opened the compartment but didn't find Amon in it. Amon had been successfully taken by Ishmael. Adam went back to Adriana's home where the worried mother was waiting. Following Adam is Hawkman, who captured two intergang soldiers for questioning. Adam took it upon himself to do the interrogation and took the soldiers so high up in the air, threatening to drop them if they didn't tell him where Amon was. They told him where Amon was, but Adam dropped them anyway. Luckily, Hawkman was there to catch them. Back in Adriana's home, they found the crown of Sabak hidden behind Amon's drawer and headed to Al Hadadiya mine in the desert where Amon was taken. On the ship, they read an ancient text in the crown that means life is the only path to death, and Hawkman asked Adriana to give him the crown so he could take it somewhere where it could be hidden for eternity. But Adriana refused as the crown was what Ishmael wanted and it was what she needed to save her son. In privacy, Hawkman learned through Dr. Fate's vision that someone was going to die, but Dr. Fate refused to tell who that someone was. Arriving at the mine, Hawkman laid out a plan, but Adam didn't even bother listening and immediately forced his way into the mine, where they found Ishmael holding him inside a room, protected by a barrier made of Eternium. Adriana went inside the barrier to give Ishmael the crown in exchange for her son, and it was then that Ishmael revealed that he was the last living descendant of King Octun. Just like King Octun, Ishmael wanted to be king, but due to the great power the crown possesses, a mere human like Ishmael cannot wield it. Speaking in the ancient Kondak language, Ishmael declared that death was the only path to life before opening the barrier, firing his gun at Amon, and then wearing the crown. Enraged, Adam caught the bullet, and his power grew uncontrollable, causing a huge explosion. Hawkman, Dr. Fate, and Adam Smasher managed to protect the others from Adam's power, but Amon was still wounded due to the impact. Guilt-ridden, Adam fled, and Hawkman followed him. That's when Adam told Hawkman the truth about what really happened before he became the champion. Here it was the name of the young boy who attempted to stage a revolt and he was Taith Adam's son. Here it was chosen to be the champion and after many victories King Octun decided to hurt those here it loved the most, his family. Taith Adam who didn't have any power then watched as the king's assassins killed his wife and he could have died the same way too if not for the adult here it who came to save him. Instead of defeating the king and saving Kondak, here it gave his power to his father in order to save him. The king's assassins found their chance to kill Hurit and the young boy died in his father's arms. The power Taith Adam has now wasn't a gift given to him by the wizards, but a curse born out of rage. After killing Octun and destroying his palace, Adam was brought back to the Council of Wizards. But Adam also killed them all and left only one wizard, Shazam, who imprisoned him along with the crown. After revealing the truth, Adam decided to give up his power, and with just the word Shazam, Taith Adam turned back to his former self. Hawkman and Dr. Fate then brought him to the Task Force X Black Site, a secret underwater site in Antarctica, where he was placed in stasis by Amelia Harcourt. But even after the death of Ishmael and Adam being put to sleep again, Dr. Fate could still see the vision of Hawkman dying. Adriana, on the other hand, was studying the crown, and that's when she realized that Ishmael had tricked Adam into killing him as he believed that the champion's magic was the only way to send him to the Rock of Finality where he would then be reborn as Sabak, the champion of the six eponymous demons. After speaking Sabak's name, Ishmael was reborn as him and became too powerful for the Justice Society to defeat. Dr. Fate's vision happened and Hawkman knew it was his time to die. But Dr. Fate had found another way to prevent Hawkman's death and that was to sacrifice himself. He created a barrier to keep the others out of the war zone before facing Sabak alone. While fighting Ishmael, Dr. Fate used telepathy to communicate with Adam, waking him up from slumber once again. The barrier between Dr. Fate and Hawkman was broken, and Hawkman rushed to save him. But it was too late. Dr. Fate had been killed at the hands of Sabak. Meanwhile, Sabak had summoned the legions of hell to terrorize Kondak. But with the help of Amon, the people of Kondak rose up against Sabak and worked together to fight for their lives and lands. Then Adam appeared to save the day. So as the people of Kondak were fighting the legions of hell, Adam faced Sabak himself. When Adam fell to the ground, Sabak believed that he had the upper hand. But then Hawkman appeared behind him, impaling him from behind. 
Using Dr. Fate's helmet, Hawkman wielded it and created illusions of himself. He pinned Sabak on his throne and Adam grabbed him by the horns. The champion lifted Sabak into the air and whispered his catchphrase into the demon's ears before tearing him apart. Sabak had fallen and so had the legions of hell. The heroes, Taith Adam and Justice Society, had won and Hawkman bid farewell to Dr. Fate one last time as he watched as the metal helmet broke into specks of gold before vanishing completely. Justice Society and Adam parted ways on good terms and Adam was left with Adriana and her little family. Before parting ways with Adriana, Amon, and Kareem, Taith Adam had decided to drop his ancient name and change into Black Adam.